introduce our first speaker. Matt Ruark is an associate professor in the Department of Soil Science at the UW-Madison and an extension soil scientist with the University of Wisconsin Extension. He has a bachelor's and master's in soil science from the University of Minnesota and a PhD in agronomy from Purdue University. His research is focused on improving nitrogen use efficiency in dairy, grain, vegetable, and biofuel production systems. He serves as the faculty advisor to the Discovery Farms program, thank you, and is on the executive committee of the Midwest Cover Crop Council and is the co-director of the Wisconsin Crop Management Conference. Welcome, Matt. All right, so, okay, it is working. All right, after lunch, so we gotta keep the energy high. Obviously, I don't, it, yeah, hopefully there's coffee. So too loud. If there's too echoey, just let me know. All right. So the title today, Balancing Your Nitrogen for Better Outcomes. So this is, uh, this is a story in three pieces. Um, and the first piece will revolve around a handout that looks, sounds like we're, we're out of upfront already. But if you didn't get a copy of your nitrogen use efficiency booklet uh, uh, and you didn't get one, let me know. Uh, let Amber know, let Eric know. We'll definitely uh, be able to get you a copy. But a lot of the information I'm going to talk about uh, today is in this extension publication. And so the first thing to highlight is that the research that, uh, that I'm gonna present uh, right now is funded from a couple different places. One is through an NRCS Conservation Innovation Grant Fund. Uh, the second is through some uh, funding from the Wisconsin DNR, as well as funding from our uh, Dairy Innovation Hub. Um, so just to set the tone of why we're talking about nitrogen today, um, and I'd like to use uh, this article. It was put out by the International Plant Nutrition Institute. Um, and I guess it's a, a, about four years old now, but they, they did an evaluation to evaluate the progress in reducing nutrient losses in the Mississippi River. And so uh, just to think about this, there's a lot of different subwatersheds that are all draining eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. And, um, and this is an area where there's a lot of nitrogen export. Um, looking at some, some numbers here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, there's a lot on the slide here, but this is, the, this is uh, across the years going 87 to 2012. This is million tons of nutrients uh, that, have, that are consumed, or at least they've estimated to be applied. And the blue is the total amount in the United States and uh, in terms of nitrogen. And the orange or the red is in the Mississippi River Basin. So that area that I just described. So the vast majority of the nitrogen that is applied to our fields in the United States does occur within the drainage area of the Mississippi River. And again, and even more of that than located primarily in our, in our corn belt. They are also able to calculate the total amount of nitrogen flux, the total amount of nitrogen loading uh, that is occurring to the Gulf of Mexico uh, from this area. And what we can see here, so this is uh, by year eight, 1980 through 2014, we're gonna focus on the blue is nitrogen. Uh, it's, the, it's in million metric tons of nitrogen. And you can see there's a lot of variation over time in terms of the total amount of nitrogen uh, being fluxed out uh, of, the, of the roots uh, of the, the root zone, of the, uh, of the watershed. Uh, but the trend line, that blue trend line shows only a very small decrease over time. So we're still exporting a lot of nitrogen um, from our cropping systems uh, out of that zone. Now to put these total numbers in context, um, so in any one year, the total amount of nitrate that's exported, uh, so it's a million metric tons, so you convert it to total pounds, so we're 2 billion pounds, this could fertilize all the corn in Wisconsin for four years. So the context is this is a lot of nitrogen. Now, uh, so we have a lot of, it's a big, it's a big area, um, and there's, uh, there's a lot of different reasons for this. And one of the primary reasons uh, is we have a lot of tile drainage in this region. We have a lot of, uh, the hydrology has changed over time. We have a lot of export. So we have a lot of local issues that are, where we need to address, but also we still have this fundamental larger um, Gulf of Mexico issue um, that, that's, that's driving a lot, of our, a lot of the nitrogen issue as well. Going back locally, I'm sure a lot of, People have seen the graph like this, the idea of we don't have as much tile drainage in Wisconsin as we do in Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, where Margaret grow, Ohio, right? Um, so we do have more export of the nitrogen that does leach 
down through the root zone uh, is, is more likely to end up in groundwater. We don't have that, we don't have as much export through tile drains out to our surface waters. So we do have we do have some problem zones in our state where we have really high nitrate concentrations of groundwater. That's driving a lot of our a lot of the discussion around uh, groundwater and the potential regulations. But what's interesting, though, is that uh, there's some interesting trends, right? So we we have seen a pretty steady increase in corn yields. Uh, this data only goes through the year 2000, but our our corn yields uh, in the U.S. have continued to increase on average over time. But what's interesting is when we look at the estimated amount of nitrogen that's applied over time to these fields as what has remained relatively flat since the 80s. So we have this, we have roughly the same amount of nitrogen being applied to our landscapes and yields increasing, leading to this yellow line here of an increase in some of our nitrogen use efficiency metrics. So on the, on the overall landscape, we should be seeing a greater um, nitrogen use efficiency happening from these larger, larger yields we're getting. We're getting more uptake. So what's, so what's happening? So the, the, and this does kind of fit with our idea that there is a decoupling between the idea of the amount of nitrogen that we need to apply uh, relative to our, our corn yields. And this fits with our kind of our bigger data sets where uh, we've conducted a lot of nitrogen rate trials and we found at any individual site, what's the optimum nitrogen rate? And what is the what's the yield obtained at that optimal nitrogen rate? And across all of our sites and our data set, this is the optimal nitrogen rate for any one site and the optimum yield for any one site. And see, there's no relationship. It's a, it's a it's a scattering of the data. So there's not that clear relationship that more that bigger yields require more nitrogen. So so this we're at a bit of a uh, a conundrum, right? We're, we're increasing that the yield side, so we're increasing the uptake side of the equation, but we still have a, we still are losing roughly, you know, the same amount of nitrate uh, into our surface waters uh, over time. So it does highlight that there's a lot of unused nitrogen in our agricultural systems, right? And we, we, and we know this. And the question is, how do we use more of it? What's our, what's our opportunity to use more of it? Well, the first is we could optimize our nitrogen a little bit better, right? Can we evaluate or fine tune our nitrogen management uh, applications um, and to identify some weaknesses or some spots where we can increase our efficiency? And there's, there's dozens and dozens of ways to do that. Um, the second is we could try to keep that extra nitrogen in the field, the unused nitrogen, we trap it with a cover crop. We talked a little bit about that. So there's some other conservation um, practices that we could use. Or we could go to utilizing some engineering solutions. Can we trap? Um, can we trap nitrate, especially as it's coming out of the tile, uh, uh, out of tile drainage? Can we use some bioreactors? Uh, or do we just simply need to treat all this nitrogen at the at the point of consumption through reverse osmosis? So, being a good soil scientist and agronomist, we I think we need to go back and reflect on this first one: evaluate or fine tune our nitrogen management plans. And so the first step then, so every farmer and every, uh, everyone in the room has their own decision of how much nitrogen they're applying, uh, applying and why they're applying it. Um, you know, all of the historic reasons that, that you know, that, uh, that led you to that decision. But then the question is, um, how would you know, you know, what, what's, what sort of information would you need to make another decision to change something, to go towards a simple application or to cut back on your nitrogen or to use a different source? Um, so the first step in knowing what to do is know where you're starting from. And that's been our approach. So these two questions, how much corn are you growing per pound of nitrogen you're applying? And what is the nitrogen balance of your field? And I'll talk a little bit more of those in depth. So when we use the term nitrogen use efficiency, I use it pretty broadly, right? It's just, you know, the, the general idea of efficiency. And we can think about how much, you know, but there's a lot of specific measurements of nitrogen use efficiency. We can think about how much yield you're getting per N applied or how much nitrogen you're using of the fertilizer you applied. So we're gonna start with two simple measurements or two simple concepts of nitrogen use efficiency that any farmer or any consultant or any, anyone could go out to a farm field and identify about that field. First one is called the partial factor productivity. We still gotta give this a catchier name, but it's just simply the yield by the N applied, right? So you would know that on every single field across every single year. What's the efficiency? So what are you getting for the nitrogen you're applying? The second one is, the, is your nitrogen balance. And this is the nitrogen you've applied minus the nitrogen removed. 
And so we're going to talk primarily about corn silage and corn grain today. So the amount of total nitrogen that's removed in whatever you're harvesting from the field. In our Discovery Farms data set, we did a lot of direct measurements of that nitrogen, but we can also use some book values to, to get at that. So what's the, what's, the, uh, what's the balance? And this idea, when I'm talking about the balance, if it's a positive balance, that implies more nitrogen was applied than removed. So it's an, an, a net addition of nitrogen to the soil. Uh, if it's a negative balance, then we're removing more nitrogen than we're applying. But it's a very simple, we call it a partial nitrogen balance. It's a very simple, these are simple approaches. So then the premise here is that farmers would need to see their nitrogen as measures of nitrogen use efficiency to decide to help uh, to help with decision making. Um, we can't, nitrate's not one of those things you can visually see as it's coming out of your tile drain, or you can't visually see it leach to groundwater. So we're trying to come up with a balance sheet type of approach to something, something that would be useful for someone to see and 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 have some real data to, okay, I'm gonna I can use this data to make some uh, decisions. Uh, and if they had a better sense of where they ranked relative to their peers, um, that would be beneficial. That would provide evidence uh, that changes in nitrogen management would be beneficial. So thus we set out to benchmark nitrogen use efficiency metrics in Wisconsin for corn grain and corn silage. And all the all this information is contained in here. Um, in our data set, uh, the data set I'll be talking about today was conducted, was built over five years. We have 197 grain fields in our data set. 97 corn silage fields. Uh, we worked with uh, anyone who would let us on their field. So we don't have, uh, but we were kind of in different zones of the state, as you can see. So it's not a perfect distribution. It's not a perfect survey, um, but it does give us a, you know, starts to give us a snapshot of what's happening in our, in our landscape. Um, the one thing that we did do is we did hand measurements. Uh, so we, do, we did collect everything by hand to get actual nitrogen uptake values and then got the uh, got the nitrogen information, you know, nitrogen in, uh, rate application information from each farmer. And also in this context, when we're talking about nitrogen applied, we're uh, in the data set, we're going to use a nitrogen management approach to quantifying the input. So we're going to calculate in the N input category, where it's all the nitrogen from fertilizer. So that's the first thing. The, and we're going to use a available N from the manure or the manure nitrogen credit or the fertilizer replacement value, right? So we're gonna use that value, the amount that you would use in a nutrient management plant that differs, right, than the total amount of nitrogen that's applied as manure. So it's the amount that we expect to be plant available. Uh, the alfalfa nitrogen credit, typically around 90 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And just for reference, our corn grain yields at 15 and a half percent, but we're gonna talk about corn silage yield in terms of dry matter. So the first thing in our data set is that there we observed there was no relationship between yield and nitrogen uh, supplied. And this kind of fits with this general theme. So when we take a snapshot of farm fields in Wisconsin, we're not seeing farm, uh, uh, we're not seeing a connection between greater yield and greater uh, nitrogen application. We're working under the assumption that each farmer is applying as, as efficient of, as, as a rate as possible. Um, but we're not seeing that there was any connection with yield driving, uh, driving the amount of N applied at any, you know, for example, if you look at a rate of 200 pounds per acre of nitrogen on the X axis, you can see you can get a whole, whole you, we can obtain a whole range of yields at that value. And this is just here for, you know, for, for statistical purposes. Uh, if you, if you might look back on your, your statistics classes, one of the more, most important things in statistics is to have a normal distribution of your data. And this data uh, just is to highlight that across, we do have a normally distributed data set, which means we can we actually can use this for real statistical purposes. Um, but what's interesting is we had a median value uh, for our partial factor productivity, about 72 pounds of grain produced per pound of nitrogen. That's about 1.2 bushels uh, per pound of N. And that range from one, our, our intraquartile range, our kind of middle 50% was about one to 1.4 bushels. Silage, we ran about 100 pounds of dry matter biomass per N applied. Uh, for, for the nitrogen budget, though, is this is where it gets kind of interesting. For our corn grain, we're operating on our, our median value was 47. So half of our uh, corn fields or greater, all right, our, our, our 50% or greater, uh, had a positive balance. So we're, moving for, we're applying 47 more pounds of nitrogen than we're removing. For corn silage, though, it was a negative, right? So we're removing obviously a lot more biomass. 
we have a negative and a median negative value. So most of our corn silage fields, we had more nitrogen removed from the field in the context of nutrient application than, than was applied. And so all of this, all of these sort of metrics are in are in this document. Uh, and then we also have a nice um, a nice flow chart to help with decision making in terms of it depends where are you at? Are you at the high end of efficiency or low end of efficiency? And all the decisions that you would need to, you would like to, uh, you should consider based on where you rank relative to your peers. In our data set, we didn't see any differences in region. So our data set that we have constructed is a statewide database. <clears throat> and this, this, uh, this PDF is available on our Discovery Farms website as well. So I won't go into all that. We have all that benchmarked and we have what we feel a really good, uh, a really good approach to decision-making uh, based, on, based on these values. But we can also use this data to, to look at some bigger trends of what's happening. And so get at this question, what's the bigger driver of nitrogen use efficiency? You know, we talked about in our, in our you know, on our, in, the, in the bigger data set across the Midwest, yields are going up, but fertilization's about the same. So what about in our data set? What's the bigger driver of use efficiency? Is it yields or is it the nitrogen that's applied? <clears throat> and so we can look at that for corn silage uh, and for corn grain. So starting with corn silage, the top value is the partial factor productivity. The second one's the nitrogen balance and looking at the effective yield. And you can see these are squared. So also you probably, uh, probably didn't want to talk this much about statistics today, but this R squared value with this regression analysis is really important, right? So when you're interpreting these things, you want to see a large R squared. That implies that these uh, it has a high association. And so in this case, the yield is only explaining six to fourteen percent of our of our nitrogen use efficiency metrics, right? So yield is not having a big effect in our landscape on nitrogen use efficiency. When we, when we compare that to the total amount of nitrogen applied, we have these R squares of 56 to 60%, so much greater. So what's our, in our landscapes, our efficiencies are really being driven by the total amount of nitrogen applied. And those trends were also seen with corn grain. Yield has a role, but it's only you know, in that 10 to 20% range. It's not having, it's, it's only slightly associated with bigger yields having greater efficiency. Um, but it really comes back down to the fifth, uh, to the nitrogen applied. So in our landscape, it is the total amount of nitrogen that's being applied that's that's um, that's driving our efficiency. And this kind of makes sense when we dug into our data a little bit. Here's a subset of our data, and what we have is the we ranked all uh, we ranked some of these fields from the uh, lowest efficiency on the left to the highest efficiency on the right. And then we graphed for every site the amount of nitrogen that was applied. And we put it as either the manure credit in brown, the fertilizer applied in gray, or the legume or alfalfa credit in green. And you can see right off the bat, those, those lowest efficiency sites came with the most, uh, the highest amounts of uh, manure nitrogen applied. And in a lot of cases, uh, we saw with these really low efficiencies really were driven by a lack of crediting of our manure and even our, our alfalfa. Um, so we do have a lot more work to do in nutrient management planning. I think that there's still a good chunk. There's still a huge uh, opportunity here to improve efficiency by just getting some manure credited, alfalfa credited. I think that there's still a big, there's a big role to play there. But the other aspect of this is that we thought we had a pretty good sized data set. And we could start doing some interesting things with this data and start looking at other factors like, well, what was the source of the nitrogen? Uh, was it split applied or not? Were cover crops used? What are these other things that are driving efficiencies? But in the end, with only, you know, with our with the number of data points that we have, even 200 data points, there wasn't enough, we don't have enough data. And so we're looking to still build our data set uh, through farmer consultant agency collaboration. This is really important. So I could have bored you with a bunch of other statistics, but at the end of the day, when we put all of these factors in these big statistical models, the only thing that comes out is the total amount of nitrogen applied. So we need, if we, but what we need is, a, a, is more data that works across a lot of different soils, right? Because we, we, we would expect soil texture to have a big effect. We would expect drainage class to have a big effect, but to do so, we're gonna need a lot of data. Um, and so that's been our charge. We're trying to figure out figure out some ways that we can really build this data set quickly and, and efficiently and uh, to, to pull out all of these effects. So 
Um, so that's the story of where nitrogen use efficiency is in our landscape. Broadly, so broadly speaking, it's coming from the amount of N applied. So we need to think about where we're at relative to our peers in terms of efficiency. And if, and if you're on the lower end of efficiency, um, that's where we have to look at a field by field basis to, to explore some options to see if there's any opportunities to improve. Okay, so, so that was the first step. And then we thought, well, what if we try to use this data set for something else? So this is not the intent of our data set, nor was it constructed to do this, but we thought it'd be fun to do. What are the implications of the partial nitrogen budget on water quality in Wisconsin? Or more specifically, can we use these measurements to predict nitrogen loss? All right, so we're creating this budget. You know, I said on average, we're losing, uh, we have about 47 more pounds of nitrogen applied than what's removed in our corn grain systems. Does this translate? Well, if we translated these sort of values to, to a potentially leachable nitrogen, if we, if we make some assumptions about the amount of nitrogen that were leached out based on that budget, does this make sense? So let's take a look. So we had to make some, some big assumptions here in terms of, well, we, we're, using the, we're using some of these potential regulatory um, components here, but the idea that the 10 part per million in the, in the leachate water is the standard. This translates about 2.2 pounds of, nit of nitrate nitrogen that would be exported per inch of recharge. So then we use, uh, we use just a couple scenarios of low recharge rates or high recharge rates to kind of get a, to bookend our values. And we used our data set based on this partial nitrogen budget to make the, and we're making this big assumption that the, the nitrogen budget, it means that that's the amount of nitrogen that could be leached out. So for corn silage, we have three scenarios under four, 6.8 or eight inches. And the shaded area is the percentage of the fields that would meet the, this criteria or be below that 2.2. <clears throat> and we see anywhere between, so 70 and 75% of these fields would meet the drinking water standard um, based on that. For corn grain though, uh, it would be much less, only 24 to 29% of the fields would meet the drinking water standard. So this is again, based on tremendously huge assumptions. So let's talk about this because as, we're, uh, as we move forward, with justifying um, what we're doing in the landscape, are these measurements gonna be the ones that are gonna be, gonna be useful in any way? So we can ask the question, does this make sense? So for corn silage, right? We talked about 70 to 75% of corn silage fields are gonna meet the drinking water standard. That seems, that seems high. And so I don't think that the simple nitrogen budget, uh, I think is gonna over, is certainly an overestimate of the amount of us uh, corn silage fields that'll meet the drinking water standard. Likely, you know, we have, um, this, these are gonna come with manure applications. We, we have enough, we have a lot of studies that quantify the amount of nitrate leached out with manure that just simply removing more nitrogen from the landscape does, isn't gonna imply that it's gonna reduce the amount that's gonna be leached out. Um, so we do have the manure issue to deal with. For corn grain, um, I don't know, maybe. So our simple nitrogen budget, so we're saying only about a quarter of the farm fields would meet these drinking water goals. Um, so we really get into this idea of, okay, this puts a lot of pressure on this one specific measurement to, to justify or to, to quantify the, the anyone's, any individual farmer's impact on groundwater, right? So the whole thing is not that much nitrate can be leached, right? Only nine to 18 pounds of nitrogen per acre can be leached on, uh, based on recharge. Uh, depending on the recharge rate. Um, I'm going to use some of, you know, we do have some historic data of nitrate leaching uh, from our Arlington Research Station. And across eight years with 170 pounds of nitrogen, we're averaging about 34 pounds of nitrate leached out per year. Our nitrogen balance is about 47. So the, our numbers are within sort of this 47 is kind of within the range of kind of an, an, you know, an estimate. But I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't, Think that these are going to be tremendously valuable uh, for water quality and we need something better we need something better than this because quite frankly um how could you create a rule that would say 75 percent of farm fields in wisconsin uh you know we couldn't meet the drinking water standard based on 75 percent of farm fields it doesn't that, that's not intuitive right it doesn't make sense so where do we need to go from here to estimate nitrogen leaching we can't i don't think we can we can't just stop at just a simple nitrogen budget 
right? We have to get, we have to get more quantitative. So, which is great for me, but more cumbersome for everyone else, right? So I think that, so our options then we could, well, we could, we could use the nitrogen balance and use this simple approach and, you know, accept limitations or ads, you know, try to create some indice. Eh. I think there's, there's a couple other options that would be better. I think this assessment of the actual fertilizer use with zero nitrogen strips holds some promise. Um, otherwise, we could try to go all the way to utilizing some sort of nitrogen leaching model. But like anything, it's going to require a lot of data, a lot of input information from farmers to get, for models to be corrected, they need a lot of input, uh, input values. And we need to validate the, the results, right? And how much nitrate leaching data do you actually do you think we actually have quantification do we have in the state right and it's the answer is not as much as you think and i don't want to step too much on our next speaker's toes but we we need a lot more actual quantification of nitrate leaching we don't have that much okay so let's dial this in can we say this assessment of the actual can we get to the assessment of actual uh fertilizer end use um so this gets, are there better on-farm measurements? So we went, we go from this idea that I really like, I really like these simple measurements of nitrogen use efficiency to guide production, you know, decisions for production, because it's gonna let you know how efficient you're being with your fertilizer for your bottom line for your production, right? But it's not gonna be able to get at how much nitrate are you actually contributing? And if that's the point that, what that's the big thing that each farmer would wanna know, then we would need, we would need additional information to know that. And the concept here is that we need something called, a, a, we need to test, we need to quantify the amount of nitrogen uptake in areas where we're with no nitrogen applied. And this gives us an opportunity to do two things. It gives us an opportunity to assess the agronomic efficiency and uptake efficiency. And so if we have areas in the field that don't have nitrogen, we could use this to create calculations. We're interested in the yield gain relative to the nitrogen applied, not just the total nitrogen achieved in the field, because some of it could be coming from the soil or coming from residual land, right? So uh, we wanna know what the gain in yield is uh, from the application of nitrogen. And then likewise, we wanna know what the increase, how much nitrogen, uh, the nitrogen uptake increases relative to the amount of N applied. And that's gonna get you at how much of the fertilizer you applied likely ended up in the plant. And so it does require whole plant sampling. And here's another way to visualize this. So on the, on the left, this is we can do a measurement of the total nitrogen uptake in, in fertilized plots. Uh, on the right, then we have the total nitrogen uptake from unfertilized plots, right? So this nitrogen comes from decomposing plant material, comes from soil organic matter, maybe a little bit of residual nitrogen in your soil. And then ooh, this amount in here, the difference between those two, that's the fertilizer that's actually used, right? And so if we're getting into an individual field basis, you wanna know if your fertilizer is being used. So uh, we were able to work with, with farmers and this took, this took a, a while to build because it's, it is more cumbersome. The trick with these nitrogen, these zero nitrogen strips, they don't have to be field length strips. They can be as, as small of an area as you need to get a, to get a really, to, to get a good measurement of of yield or nitrogen uptake um, in an area. So you don't have to do a full length strip in the field. It can be a relatively small area in the field. Um, so across, we have 55 fields where we looked at uptake efficiency in grain and 17 fields where we looked at uptake efficiency in silage. And on average, we're seeing about 58% or 60, almost 60% 60 of the nitrogen that's applied in our grain fields actually end up in the plant. So this is actually a pretty decent efficiency number. In corn silage fields, our range was, was much greater, although we had less fields, but around 50% of the nitrogen applied um, with up to 70% uh, was taken up by the plant. So that's on the efficiency on a percent applied standpoint, but we could also potentially use this to calculate, we can calculate the used nitrogen, and we could also use it to calculate the unused nitrogen. So we, we calculate, we, um, we could also do a, me a measure of the applied nitrogen that wasn't taken up in pounds per acre. So the first thing is that a lower use of, uh, utilization efficiency means lower amounts of unused N. And so what we have graphed here is that uptake efficiency and percentage. And we, we so this is from, you know, 
uh, zero. You know, so we're looking at about, once we're at about 60% efficiency, uh, once we get below 60% efficiency, that's when we see the total amount of nitrogen not taken up really start to exceed some of these thresholds that we might be comfortable with. So about 50 pounds or more nitrogen that, that wasn't used. So the more efficient you can be, but you're never going to know your actual efficiency of your fertilizer if you don't know how much comes from your soil. And we haven't built that into any sort of model or any sort of nitrogen management model um, to guide nitrogen applications. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, we struggle with this. But if you would evaluate it on your individual farm field, you would know you would have that direct measure. So we could also evaluate our, um, we could also do some of these other estimates. So what about, okay, so we're interested in this unused end. So, and it doesn't, that this unused end does not necessarily mean this is the total amount that would be leached out, but it's a little more quanti you know, quantifiable. We can have some you know, losses, gases, we could have some stay within the soil system consumed by microorganisms and those sort of things. Could be trapped by cover crops if, if those are applied later. But we have this amount of unused end that's applied, and this is the nitrogen applied um, to our to our fertilized plots. And we can see that they're generally positively associated, but it's not that predictive, right? That we have this R squared of only 0.3. So it's not really representing a lot of the variation. Um, so this is different than our other data set that, that, that said the amount of fertilizer was really uh, driving that nitrogen balance. The end applied here isn't. And that's because every, really in this case, every field we're, we're evaluating is so different, right? It's creating this, this, this big variation that we're seeing. And this also kind of ties to the idea and yield really had almost no effect. This is the yield when we did apply fertilizer. So the, the total yield you're getting when you apply fertilizer has nothing to do with the amount of unused end. Every individual field has different things that are happening. <clears throat> What's more interesting is that something that's showing a little bit of an effect is, the, is the, the yield when we're not applying nitrogen. So which really is kind of representing the amount of nitrogen that's coming from the environment, the soil, the decomposing plant material, and those sort of things. That's the, that's the driver. And this is this, you know, this, is this missing point uh, that, that might help us um, manage nitrogen better or know how efficient we can be. Or more specifically, to know how much nitrogen that if you're applying it is going to be taken up. So the, the bigger the yields were uh, with the zero when you're not applying nitrogen, uh, generally there's more unused end because it's generally saying like you're going to achieve this yield, but the more, the bigger the yields are here, the less, you know, the, the more, the less that's going to be used and, and there's going to be more unused end. But these are sort of these things that you would never really know unless you, unless you set out to test it. Um, and lastly, then the amount of unused N compared to, we also compare that to the nitrogen balance. So, um, this really goes to show that, so the nitrogen balance, that was the N removed. That's the grain based measurement, right? That doesn't use the zero N strip. Uh, and we compared that to the, the unused N and they were generally positively associated, but not predictive of each other. Right? So the nitrogen balance, which does not use a zero N test strip, is not highly predictive of unused N. So the, the, the simple measurements we were talking about that we could collect data really quickly on and really build a quick data set on isn't going to be helpful to quant for our water quality uh, or water quality needs. So the take home messages that I'd like to reiterate here is so the simple assessments are included in this document. Right, I think they're going to be valuable for nitrogen decision making. I, can, I think they could be really helpful in helping justify the practices you're doing or uh, helping think about, oh, there's some opportunities for improvement. I think that this, this, this is a clear benefit to that for the production side. But the simple assessments are not great for addressing water quality. And we, don't, we do not want those uh, simple assessments to be used. So for on an individual farmer basis, uh, we think the next step is the, is the utilization of zero nitrogen strips. So they can better assess the value of the fertilizer you apply, because really the value of the fertilizer is your yield gain from the fertilizer, right? So it helps us really get it, it really get at that value. It better quantifies the amount of unused nitrogen. And quite frankly, I think that the, the, your yield with, without any nitrogen is a good assessment of your soil health. If you, if you have pretty good yields uh, without any nitrogen, 
uh, that would give an indication of that, that things, uh, your soil is producing a lot of nitrogen. And you also, I mean, it could also be you have a lot of residual nitrogen. So we certainly would want a soil test for plant available N, but it could be an interesting indicator of, of soil health. If you're looking to track, if you've been conducting, uh, if you're trying to build the soil health and trying to see how that connects to your, your yields and cut back or, or skip a, some nitrogen in an area, that'll give you an indication of how things are going. The big, you know, the, the big caveat to this is that obviously in any one year, we're going to have huge weather effects. So these are things that need to be conducted over time with a lot of data recorded with it, right? So, um, but we think that this, these zero end strips could be a fun and uh, interesting thing to help us start to move forward in on-farm water quality assessments. So with that, uh, that's what I have for